Why aren't the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl contenders? Do, don't we have the best running back in the NFL? Don't we have the best, one of the best defenses in the NFL? And don't we have one of the best duo wide receivers in the NFL? Oh, matter of fact, in the past six games, we may have one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. What's their Achilles heel? Well, I'm going to talk to the coldest panel in the game. You already know what to do. Kill the music. Let's make this epic. Welcome to the Skybox, where we give our epic perspective in the imperfect sports world. Now, let me introduce you to the coldest Taylor in the game. First, he's back. He shakes the rope. He shakes the rope like the ultimate warrior. My guy, my guy, you've been in the trenches. You already know what we got to do. My guy, one word. Mama. What's good with you guys? Gentlemen, it's nice to be back. Missed you guys. My guy, my guy. Next, next. Ah, uh, he's been drawing those beautiful plays. He's been drawing those beautiful plays. Block, punt. He's been drawing up the Hail Mary. He's been drawing up everything but for the Dallas Cowboys. They have not been drawing up the best plays. I think it's about time. I think it's about time they need to call this guy. But it's got to be a contract. It's got to be a hefty contract to get this guy. My guy, Coach Twilight. What's good with you? I got, the, I got the best recipe for Dallas. Throw the season and get rid of that. There it is. There it is. You already know I got the coldest panel on the game. You know who I am. I'm Michael T. Source of light over the mic. You know what you need to do. Hit that like a subscribe button. It's only three ninety nine. Ah, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. The Philadelphia Eagles are they Super Bowl contenders? Are they Super Bowl contenders? Well, this team may look like Super Bowl contenders, but we're going to see what, what else is going on because I know there's a little bit more. Coach, I want to ask you something. Are the Eagles really the NFC best bet for the Super Bowl? No. They're good. Don't take that away. But the surprise is Washington. Everybody's not, everybody's been looking at the Eagles and Washington is slowly creeping behind them and on the back of the neck. You remember how you used to get somebody when you sit on the bus, or maybe it's just me, and you see it with that meat on the back of the neck, you like, that's how they're going to do the Eagles. I'm just saying, <laughs> that's just me. Interesting. Interesting. Go Commanders. <laughs> I want to ask you the same, the same question, Mamba. Are the Eagles the best bet in the NFC for, for the Super Bowl right now? You know, Twilight called it. I mean, they're good. There's no doubt they're good. But you look at the past five games, you look what they've done in these games. They've, they've won. Uh, Cleveland was a tough matchup for them. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but this is the game that's going to either set Philadelphia apart from being a pretender or a contender. I, you know, that's, that's just me. I'm, I'm a realist when it comes to football. I'm not someone that's going to super inflate my team when they, excuse my language, suck ass. So they're a good team. They've got a lot to prove yet, and this is tonight's game where they can prove that they can play with the Detroits and they can play with those teams that are doing it week in, week out. I want to I break down the Eagles right now, their record. Let's look at their the only losses they had. They were one catch away from winning that game against the Falcons. Now, mind you, against the Bucks, they got blown out. But let's go with this. Again, no A.J. Brown, no Devontae Smith, no Lane Johnson, 
I mean, when you are missing your best offensive defensive uh, player, you're missing your second best offensive player, you're missing your best offensive lineman. I mean, that was a disaster right there. I would say if the Bucks played us now, and that would be a, that would be a gun. That would be a shootout, absolutely. But it would not be a blowout, absolutely guaranteed. It would not. But the Bucks no. are without Mike Evans. There was they're without Chris Godwin right now. They're two primary receivers. Winning teams find ways to win. And oh, great out of your mamba. Winning teams find a way to win. Detroit doesn't have Aiden Hutchinson right now, and he was the top defensive end in football. So Detroit had to go out and supplant him with someone else. So as much as I look at Philly, and I love Philadelphia, you still have to get over the one play against Atlanta. You have to go out and produce. I mean, I hate to say it. Look at Kansas City. How many games have they won by one point? You know, they find this magic and they win because winning teams find ways to win. Hence why they're one of the supreme teams of the NFL. All right. I want to ask, I'm going to ask you guys this question. I'm going to throw a team out there and you tell me, are the Eagles better than them or not? Are the Niners better than the Eagles right now? Healthy, yes. Vikings better than them? No. No. Let's go with one more. Lions. Yeah. The Lions are better. Yeah, the Lions are better. I mean, for sure. I mean, again, it's it's not disrespecting Philadelphia. I know <laughs> it's Philadelphia has got to have a coming out party tonight. They can't just beat Washington by a touchdown. They've got to beat Washington by 17 points or more to prove that they can hang with the Detroits, that when San Francisco is healthy and who will probably be a matchup for them if Philadelphia makes the playoffs, that they can go out and pretty much toss them around like they did two years ago. Amen. Welcome, Daryl. Welcome, Daryl. What's going on there, guy? What up? What up? Let me ask you this, Daryl. You got the Lions versus the NFC field. Who are you taking? Lions. You got the Lions against the NFC field. Who are you taking, Mamba? Up until this week? Yeah, at at this point. This like, point? not like for the rest of the year, just at this point. At this point, I'm taking Detroit. Lions versus the field, coach. I'm going with Dan Campbell, baby. Dan Danny Campbell, baby. His name is Danny, but we call him Dan for sure. Looking at it as of right now, if you would ask me the Lions versus the field as of right now, I would agree with you guys. It would be the Lions. They're the best team in the NFL, I would say, are the Chiefs. I would I would pick them better than the Chiefs right now because if you go roster for roster, I'd pick them over the Chiefs. Yeah, say, saying that – um. That like Philadelphia game against the Falcons with that catch, that's you could go like, oh man, the Chiefs didn't block the field goal. You know what I mean? Like you be able to pull that out of so many games. Like, unfortunately, that's just how for man, if Tyree didn't catch that on the head, you'd be like, oh, all right. Like, but I mean, that was like a that was like a learn like a learning curve that the Eagles needed to like boost them into wherever they need to go. Like you don't want early success with like a team like that. You need that it kind of needs to mold itself throughout the season. I agree. Mom, I, I looked at the ESPN analytics, and you'll see it right now. Who do you think is the biggest threat to the Lions then? If Philadelphia keeps its pace of winning and winning single-handedly. They are the challenge. If Philadelphia squeaks out wins, then I would put Detroit ahead of Philadelphia for sure. 
hands down. Okay. I'm looking at the way QB one's playing, playing unbelievable, especially after the bye. As of right now, he's still on close to 2,000 yards. He has 12 touchdowns, five interceptions. His QB rating is at 103.4 right now. I got A.J. Brown. Has 28 receptions for 553 yards and three touchdowns. Without AJ Brown, we're one and two. With AJ Brown, we're a problem, especially this year. We're six and all. But why don't you guys why don't you guys give me an opinion about both of these guys? First, Jalen Hurts. Talk to me. Mama. Okay. So coming out of the bye, I think this needs to be addressed. Philadelphia has run the ball more. Jalen Hurts has been under center, and they're doing play action. Okay? That's getting the ball out quickly of Jalen's hands. So there was definitely change. There was response to that. Okay? Saquon, I think, is having the success, not just on his own back, but knowing that he has two deep threats and mid-route runners such as A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. So without having Saquon, you don't have the success of A.J. Brown. Without having Devontae Smith, you don't have that win the other week either. That was a heck of a catch in the back of the end zone. That was dead, dead legged I've ever seen that you can be. So, you know, there, there are a lot of factors that play in there. Jalen's getting the ball out of his hands. He's getting rid of it. I think he's had one turnover in the last <laughs> games. So, yeah, Jalen's playing better, but that's expected as your QB1. This is what I'll say, what you said about two players. Right. Last year, Devontae Smith was still catching over 1,000 yards. A.J. Brown still catching over 1,000 yards without Saquon Barkley. They did this with, with Swift last year. All that when they upgraded, I'm honestly going to say this. The upgrade was with Saquon Barkley, but the super upgrade, as of right now, the way they're playing right now, I probably have to be that O-line. Mm -hmm. That O-line has kept it to where you have A.J. Brown catching those catches. That's where you're having Mr. Totag Swag catching one of the best catches in the, in the game right now make that back of the end zone catch against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Those are the type of catches just because – why? Because they held up more than four seconds for Jalen to get that ball, that ball off. Yeah. A.J. Brown is a thousand-yard receiver regardless. There's not many receivers you can save with that. I would go with, like, Justin Jefferson. I would say A.J. Brown. You could throw maybe one or two more in there, and that's about it. A.J. Brown just got a little bit better with Saquon Barkley, but without Saquon Barkley, he still was doing his thing. Same thing with, with Devontae Smith. I want to ask you about A.J. Brown, Daryl. What's your thoughts on how he's playing this year? A.J. <clears throat> AJ Brown's that's Bryant. You know what I mean? He don't got no crazy route tree. Don't think he, bro, give me a slant. Let me get a four-yard gain in the first quarter. Touch the ball. Hey, Saquon, they, they can never, like, they, they're never going to stack the box against this guy. And they're never going to, like, they can never double AJ. They can never stack the box against him. Because they're going to they're gonna leave something. And, bro, all you got to do is throw it up for AJ. Like I said, he's, he's Des Bryant. He's DK Metcalf. There, there's the Cooper Rush receivers, the CD Lamb that got this crazy route tree, bro. I, I could, I could kick the ball to AJ. Wow. You know what I mean? You said AJ, DK AJ Metcalf? No, he's not even. Just, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying an, an athletic receiver that will out athletic any corner. On that one, buddy. That, that's not right. You compare AJ Brown? No, that is he's on a second tier. DJ Metcalf is here. Give him a quarterback like Philadelphia has, and you will not touch DJ Metcalf. 
Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying AJ Brown is better than DJ Metcalf. I'm well, just you, saying he's you're, a. You're putting him in the same. He's a he's a physical here. receiver. Nah, he's not that physical. He's a little light in the pants. AJ Brown ain't a physical receiver. Nah, he's a little light in the pants. AJ. I would. I would. Mm, not at oh all. my god! Whoa, geez. I, I mean, DK Metcalf. I mean, come on. He's he's. Yeah, a I mean, athletic. It's it's yeah, no yeah. it's no comparison. But. AJ Brown, what he brings to the table week in, week out. I mean, he can he can run the slant. He can run, you know, the route tree. He can do those things. Yeah, he's, he's, in the he's a go route runner. He's straight up the field. He's straight up, you know, period. And he's strong as hell, no doubt about it. But to say that AJ is second tier, nah, he's sure. Bro, what what's AJ six seven two thirty? Uh, am I like am I off? Am I off or something? I just I just don't see him as the same tier as DJ Metcalf is. He's no, no, no. I'm not. I'll, uh, yeah, I'm just saying physical receiver. Des Bryant, AJ. Oh, for, you for know sure. what I mean? Those physical receivers that, that that need to touch the ball. He is a current bro. Day hey, bro, if AJ. Yes. If if AJ don't touch the ball by the fourth quarter and they're up thirty five to nothing, it's a problem. It's a problem. Wait. And well, the reason if I if AJ that, don't touch the ball and they're up thirty five nothing, bro, he, he never cares. Let me ask Ever. you this question. Hold on. Let me ask you guys this, this question, Coach. Let me ask you this question since we're talking about these offensive players. Looking at the offensive side of the ball, who do you think is the most important player on the team? Is it Jalen Hurts? QB1, is it EJ Brown? Because when you lose, when he's not in, almost nine times out of ten, you may lose the game. Or we're going with Saquon Barkley, who is arguably the best running back in the NFL. Nah, yeah, he's good. I'm going to go with Saquon <laughs> Barkley, but, you know. Yeah. Y'all, when y'all get a good running back, y'all y'all deem him as damn near Jesus. He, he, Saquon is good. <laughs> Slow down. We haven't even got to the second half of the season where hamstrings start to kick in. So <laughs> let us be honest no with that. No one's that on me, Bobby. I like Saquon. He's doing good. He's in warm season weather. Now, this is the second half of the season where he doesn't work out. In the ha- oh, Ooh, the hammy kicked no, in. No, no, so no, he's no, out no, at least two to three weeks. So I'm going to go with the QB1 because I know he's going to stay open. Hmm. <laughs> Best abilities, availability. Yep. Hmm. I think that's the truth. Mom, I want to ask you, which side of the ball do you need? Do we need to be more consistent on to become the Super Bowl contenders? Defense. Defense. Defense is what wins your championships. You have to carry that, baby. I mean, I'm <laughs> go, Mama. Go, Mama. I will fight that until the end of time. I mean. You look at any offense, without any offense, you need a defense. I mean, the best defense for scoring is defense. I mean, look at Baltimore. Look at their title run with Sarah Gusa and Ray Lewis and those guys. That was one hell of a defense, dude. And they had a shit-ass quarterback, you know? I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, hey Mamba. Hey, Mamba, wasn't there a Super Bowl that Tom Brady broke the Super Bowl record for passing yards? Yeah, I think it was against Philadelphia. So yeah. I, I, mean, I'm say, I know I'm saying it's like they needed a defense because Philly still beat them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, when you look at the domination of the Super Bowls over the years, look at the defense. Look at the no-name defense of the Dallas Cowboys in 94. I mean, that team itself. I mean, look at San 92, Francisco. 92. Yeah, I mean, look at San Francisco, their defense. I mean, they had a great complementary offense, but it's the defense that wins it for you. They shut down the aerial attack of the Broncos in the late 80s. I mean, so you got to have that defense. That defense can turn the game around for you in a heartbeat. One pick. <laughs> Mama, how do you think the defense has made a huge impact so far this year? Taking Darius Slay out of the game, sitting his ass on the bench. Putting in, <laughs> bring I, it, baby. Go on, I, I bet, I I bet mean, you were hyped on. when he got injured last week. Yeah, you're like, mean, yeah. like, yes, Quinion's in the whole yes. time. <laughs> you know, and not to mention, Coop is playing. Wow. Yep. I, I am so impressed with what he's doing. 
And, you know, and Zach secondary is nice. Yeah. And look at Zach Bond, what he's doing as a middle linebacker for Philadelphia. He is the first linebacker in 10 years, 10 years to win defensive player for Philadelphia. So Bond is delivering. Nicobe Dean is finally learning his scheme at the outside linebacker position. If he doesn't make that pick against Jacksonville, we lose. So, yeah, for sure. You think that's Fangio? I, I think it's Fangio, and I think it's a little bit Howie. Howie finally got it right with defensive players. I mean, we have one of the youngest defensive teams out there right now. So, you know, you got to give some credit to Howie. I know I, I slash him all the time, but at the same time, sometimes Howie tends to overboast what he picks up and what he actually drafts. But you finally see up front getting the push. I mean, uh, Monty Williams is coming through now, but it's that linebacker play. That linebacker play, if you don't have that north, south, east, west, controlling the line of scrimmage and, you know, into that second tier, you're done. You're gonzo. And they've been they've been stepping it up in a big way. Let's make this epic. If you like this show, why don't you now believe that we're not thinking that Saquon Barkley is without a doubt the best running back in the NFL. Check this game out.